Hey, what's up? Guys, this is Eric with programwitheric.com. And once again, I have another tutorial for you on Amber.js. And what we're going to look at today is templates. So please follow along here. Before I get started, a uh, couple of great resources. If you haven't already checked out, my Ember.js cookbook has a lot of information about templates, a lot of information about a lot of other resources, a uh, lot of other resources in this book here, including routing, components, controllers, and some advanced topics on on all sorts of like different uh, Ember validations, Ember Mirage, a lot of things in here. Anyways, uh, also I can't uh, stop saying you always should check out the Ember guides too. They have some great information on, on what we're talking about here. Um, so we're going to go and create a uh, look over templates. To create a new project in Ember, you just go Ember New and then the project name. But for the sake of simplicity, I already created a project here, my new template project. And I have two windows open here. So I'm going to go ahead and just run Ember Serve on this window. And then what this will do is it'll just run the server, a local server for Ember in the background. And by the way, if this looks doesn't look familiar, check out my previous video where I go over how to install Ember CLI, the command line tool. And this will run, I'm running this on Linux, but this certainly works exactly the same in, in Mac and pretty much Windows too. So let's go into our new template project here. And before we start, let's create, let's use the ember g command. And if you ever get confused, you can run ember help, ember tac tac help. And that'll give you all the commands that you can, that you can do. And you can also run ember help generate. And that'll give you specific help about the generate command and how to use it. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run ember. Um, a short way of running generate is g. And then template. Uh, let's run a controller first. So let's create a component. And we'll call it names. Uh, we'll call it names dash. Uh, we'll do template dash names. Doesn't really matter what the component name is just something that makes sense to us and it says it was it was created here and let's just make sure it works so we'll run vi and we'll look at our app folder and this is the directory structure here on the left so we'll go ahead and take a look at components and then template names you can see it created it here if we look back here at templates, and then you see under templates components, there's a template names uh, file here. So this is an HBS, and so this is a handlebars file. So let's just see if this works. Hello from Eric. And you can see here, here are the curly brackets here, and this is used in handlebars. Uh, we're not going to talk about yield today, but this is uh, this is a part of our component here. So we'll just go back in, and now the way the structure works is all the templates are in the folder named templates, and templates are what we're going to use for our UI. This is what's displayed to the user. It's a combination of HTML and handlebars. So we go to application.hps. We're just going to see if our template-names component shows up. So I'm going to save it there. I'm at a break to the end. We're going to do no fancy HTML or CSS in this video. We're just going to show how handlebars works and how templates work. And let's open up our folder, localhost is 4200. All right, so hello from Eric. So we know that the template name here, hello from Eric, is inside our component. So we've written our first component, and our component is showing up inside our Chrome Firefox or Chrome browser here. If you inspect it, by the way, and take a look at it, you'll know it, it does it. It does surround it in a div. Uh, that's just by convention. But we won't get too much into that. Let's add a couple properties to our component. We'll add first name. We'll call it Eric, and we'll add a last name, and we'll call it Hanchet. That's me. And then we'll go back to the template here. And let's see if it can access our first name. We'll go, hi. We'll delete this line. We'll say, hi, 
This will be Eric. And you can see every you always surround your properties by these two uh, brackets here. And we'll add the last name. And if you can see here, uh, from we can see here that it added hi Eric Hanchet. So it grabbed the two properties from our components and then added them in here. Another thing you can do is there is something called an input helper. And we can actually have this value equal our first name. So I had a break here. And what you can do here is you can see the first name shows Eric. But if I change it to Bob or Jimmy, you can see it's updating here in real time. Um, because these, um, we're using the input helper and by default it's two-way bound. And what I mean by that is that this property is in the controller, but when we change it in the UI, in the handlebars template, it actually gets changed in the component as well. So it's it's two-way it's two uh, binded here. Uh, another thing we can do is we can add actions. So let's add an action. We'll go back to our template names. And the way we do that is we add in actions and we have opening brace and closing brace. And we can add in, let's add an action called press. Now you can write it like this. This is kind of the ES5 way to do it. But we're not going to write it that way because a little bit easier way to write it, we can just write it as a function like this, like a met, um, press function method there. And then we're just going to show an alert box. Hello. And we'll save it. And to access this action, we'll add a button to our component. So we'll add a button. And in this button, we'll add curly braces again, action. And we want to access the press, so we'll call it press. Call it press me, the name of the button. And we'll have to close it here. So we saved it, and now we have a press me. Now let's get on the next line. So we're going a little fast here, but just adding this is all simple. Simple HTML. I'm not going to go into anything, any CSS. So we have now have this press me button. So you press it, up, oh, and here's the alert box saying hello. So it looks like it got the information from the template. So one other thing we can do here, let's say uh, we wanted to have our own value here. So we can just make something up. We can call it value, uh, we'll call it my value. We can actually pass this my value on. We can also inside the template grab this value. But we can pass my value on from our input helper to this action. And then what we can do inside here, we'll go to the press, we'll call it val, you can call it my value, doesn't matter, and we can add it to here. So let's see if that worked. So now if I type in one, two, three, four, five, and press me, yep, so here's our alert message and I pass that value into here. So this is just two quick little things inside the t how to use templating. There's a lot of other things we can go over. Um, conditionals, we can create our own helpers, but this will kind of get you started on how it works. Once again, thank you and if you have any, um, please, if you like this video, you can subscribe. Um, you can also check out links to my blog below uh, and a link to where to buy my book. And if you have any more questions, you can also just uh, respond to comment below and I'll answer it. Thanks.